Hi, this is Jill Simonello, and welcome to my channel, Car Du Jour. And this is where I take a look at the new cars that I am driving every week. This week, we happen to be in the BMW 540i xDrive, and that is more of the mid-level BMW 5 Series, and it has the all-wheel drive system. So I'm going to flip this camera around. I'm going to show you what has been refreshed for the 2021 model year, and we're going to talk a little bit about how this vehicle feels and um, how it drives. And frankly, let's, uh, spoiler alert, well, let's get this out of the way right now. Um, how it drives is pretty awesome. So, all right, let's flip the camera around and take a closer look at the BMW 540i xDrive. As we move to the outside of the vehicle, first I have to apologize for the test vehicle being a little bit dirty. In case you haven't noticed, we've had a little bit of snow. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some of these changes here. The first thing you're going to notice probably is going to be the fact that this grill gets a little bit bigger for 2021. It's not a huge change. It's not the uh, buck teeth, beaver teeth design that you have seen um, and others have commented on in, say, you know, the, the three or the four series, but it does get a little bit bigger. They are paving the way to bring a bigger grill here, so be prepared probably coming uh, with the complete update in a couple of years. Now the next thing you're gonna see that has changed is this headlight configuration. The design has changed and the shape has changed a little bit and the lighting signature is just a little bit different. Updated and I think it looks nice. Overall, I think for a refresh, this looks really good. Now the other big area of change is going to be to the tail end of the BMW 5 Series. I think the lines here have sharpened up just a little bit. It looks a little bit more stern and strong. Uh, my husband likes to say it looks sportier, but the other thing that you will see is this tail light design has changed. It has a little bit more of a blacked out configuration around the edges and it wraps around the side of the vehicle just a little bit more. And the depth to these lights is definitely more 3D and more distinctive. I think it looks pretty cool at night when the lights are on. So now that we're back here, there are a couple things that I want to talk about with the trunk. This is a kick activated trunk. So in theory, when you come up, you kick underneath and it opens. I have to tell you, this is the first time I've been able to get this to work all week. I've been in this vehicle for five days. I've been trying to kick open this trunk and I haven't been able to do it. But magically today, when I'm recording video, it works perfectly. So this is a kick activated trunk. And I like that in theory, if your arms are full, you walk up, you kick underneath, it opens, you put stuff in, it works really well. Plus, they also have the button for you to press that closed so that you don't have to, again, slam it shut. So two really nice things if you can get them to work on the back of this. Let's try this again. Again, now it's gonna work every time. All right, so before we take a look at the rest of this BMW 540i xDrive, just wanna take a quick look at the engine compartment. So this is a 3.0 liter inline six cylinder engine. So this is not a V6, this is an inline six cylinder engine that delivers 335 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Now, because this version is the all wheel drive model, and it'll have a zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. If you had the rear wheel drive option, you would go from zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the vehicle. Now that we're back inside the vehicle, I wanna talk a little bit about seating comfort. I'm about five feet tall and I will say that the, the side bolsters uh, are very supportive. I do find the seats to be mostly comfortable. They're a little bit stiff on my tailbone, uh, but it's not unmanageable. So a little bit of cushion, but not too much. I think it would be okay for a long road trip, but I just mostly drove around Chicago and up to the suburbs, so I couldn't say 100% if this is super comfortable for the long haul, but it's not uncomfortable for the short haul. The other thing to note is that the seat bottom adjusts, and I think that's really cool, but I will say that for my petite frame, the, the, the seat bottom is just maybe about this much too long. So I wish that it, now that it adjusts, that it would 
be just a little bit shorter and then it would accommodate somebody my size even better. Um, not completely uncomfortable, but like I said, probably like just this much too long. So overall seat comfort in the driver's seat is pretty good. My husband was in the passenger seat yesterday. He said he thought that was really good. He's about five foot eight and weighs about uh, 190 pounds, so about twice my size. He was also comfortable. He specifically mentioned the seat comfort. Let's take a look at the rear seats. This would be the benefit of being five feet tall. <laughs> I can kind of slide back here without leaving the vehicle. It's either good or bad, I don't know. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice is this seat is for my driving position. This seat right here was my husband sitting in it. So if you go behind the driver, I probably have a solid foot and a half between my knees and this seat right here. However, if you go behind my husband's driving position, I can barely get my feet in and my feet are a size four. However, once my feet are down there, there's plenty of room and I probably have about three or four inches between my knees and the back of this seat, even in the far back, tilted back position. Obviously, this seat is for the youngest child. I sat here a lot <laughs> as a kid. Um, not going to be comfortable. The seat itself has no padding or cushion whatsoever, so you're not going to want to take a road trip and put a child back here. You're just not. They will not like you or thank you for it. However, once you get to, you know, sit in the seats back here, this is actually really comfortable. Um, it has more padding, I think, than the driver's seat or the front passenger seat does. And um, it just, it feels really supportive. I feel the support in my mid back. I feel it in my tailbone. The seat kind of contours to my back. And um, this is someplace I could probably spend some time in. However, I have to go back to the fact that BMW has everything as an option. So other than the fact that this seat is comfortable, there's not a lot else back here. You do have a USB-C charge port and nothing else. <laughs> you can adjust how um, the air flows, but you can't control the temperature. There is no heated seat back here, and uh, there's certainly no cooled seat back here, and this is a $77,000 vehicle. So um, other than the fact that this seat is really comfortable, there's not a lot else back here. Let's power up the BMW 540i xDrive and take a closer look at some of the interior features. So the first thing to look at is this screen. It has gotten a little bit bigger for 2021 and previously it was 10.25 inches, I believe, and has gone up to a 12.3 inch screen. So a little bit more space for you to see all of these very nice graphics. I like seeing the map take up the full screen. Looking at the rest of the interior, you can see that this has the Napa leather package. It's an up-level feature, it is an option. This is not standard, but I like it. I think it looks really good. I like the color, I like the quilting. I know not everybody likes it, but I think it looks good. In addition to getting a bigger screen, it is also worth noting that the Apple CarPlay system is now standard. BMW used to charge a fee to get Ab Apple CarPlay, and it was a subscription fee, but it is now standard. It is now included in the price of the vehicle. I think that's a much better option. It is also wireless. So in addition to having wireless CarPlay, you also have wireless charging. One area where I think BMW has a little bit of a leg up in, over some of the competition is the fact that when you have a map on the 12.3 inch screen, and this is my Waze map from Apple CarPlay, it doesn't do away with the BMW map that appears behind the gauges. Now, some of the other German automakers, what they will do is put a compass back here <laughs> instead of the map because you've opted to use the Apple CarPlay rather than their native map. Um, but the native map looks really nice and I've played around with the navigation system and I think the navigation system also does really well. I really like the integration of how you can go between both the native navigation system as well as the CarPlay navigation. So you can either program your destination into this system or you can easily switch over from here 
to Apple CarPlay and program your destination in here. So I really, really like the integration that BMW has configured for Apple CarPlay in the BMW 5 Series. All right, I wanna talk a little bit about the auto stop start system because one of the things that has been refreshed for this model year is in fact the mild hybrid system. So here I do, here I'm coming to a stop and the engine shuts off. It's very quiet. I don't feel the stutter. I don't feel any of the vibration that I normally feel when a system like this engages. However, you will notice that the HVAC system has also muted. So that hasn't changed, but the way the system operates has. It's definitely a little bit smoother and watch here, the light just turned green, a little bit faster to engage. Now, if I were in heavy traffic trying to turn, you know, make a left into traffic and it might be a little bit laggy, but this is a faster system than I have ever felt before. So they've done a really nice job changing the auto start system to make it a little bit better. But overall, I think they've done a much better job with this. I don't completely hate it. So I just wanna check out the Park Assist system in the BMW 5 Series. So I'm going to press the button, engage the system, and move forward. Now, the interesting thing about this system, so you'll notice I'm on a one-way street right here, and it's found a couple of parking spots. And you'll notice it found one on the left side of the vehicle. So I'm going to press the button. It says, start parking, take your hands off the steering wheel, and release the brake. So I've done that and the vehicle is steering. This is a narrow street, so I'm a little bit nervous about that over there, but it's um, steering, it's braking, it's doing everything, including shifting the gears. And I think that is really cool. And this is a tight space, yet <laughs> the vehicle is managing to get into it just fine. And I love the fact that it can do it both left and right. Completed, vehicle secured. So it even put the vehicle in park. All I have to do is turn the car off. Now, the other thing the system will do is help you get out of this space. So again, you press this button to engage the system and it shows select arrow to leave the parking spot. So. I'm selecting the arrow, it turned on my blinker. To start parking, take your hands off the steering wheel and release the brake. So observe surroundings and intervene if necessary. But the vehicle is maneuvering to put me in a position to get out of this space. Now it doesn't completely get you out of the space, but it does put you in drive, it has the blinker on, and it lines you up to pull out. And there you go, I think that's pretty cool. Now one of the things you can do with the around view camera, and one of the reasons why I really like it, is you can set up an activation point. So here I am driving in my alley, I'm coming up onto my garage, and the camera turned on, to let me know that I'm close to my garage. It helps me navigate the um, trash cans and pools and anything else that might be in my alley. And then I can proceed to park in my space as normal. And as soon as I put the car in reverse, then the rear camera pops on. So I really like how this system is set up in forward and reverse, and I specifically like the activation point that automatically turns the camera on at a specific GPS location. Again, this is really good for fine tuning to make sure I don't hit my back wall. I have turned the camera around because now is the point in the review where I talk about the five things that I like and 
the five things that I don't like. And I have to admit, there's probably more things that I like and more things that I don't like, but for expediency's sake, we're only gonna talk about the top five. So here we go. The number one thing that I like about the BMW 540i is going to be the driving dynamics. We talked about earlier, this is equipped with the inline six cylinder engine and it is pretty awesome. There's plenty of power for merging, for fast passes, for some little aggressive driving. And even though this is more of a midsize than a compact sedan, this is a pretty nimble vehicle. And frankly, I would expect nothing less from BMW. So that is going to be the number one thing on the like list. So the number two thing that I like about the test vehicle is going to be the park assist feature. We've seen this previously on the Chrysler Pacifica and BMW has offered this for a while and it operates pretty well. The number three thing that I like about the BMW 540i xDrive is going to be the traffic jam assist feature. I think that this is probably going to be way better in a stop and go traffic jam situation, which frankly is what it's intended to do, where you can sit there, keep your hands off, but pay attention to your surroundings. I like the assist. It just is that extra double production to make sure that there's nothing around you that you're not missing. The fourth thing I like about this test vehicle is going to be the around view camera. I cannot say this enough in any review that I do, but around view cameras are essential, especially when you are in a tight urban situation. And it's not necessarily a, some, you know, it doesn't replace your mirrors and driving by your mirrors, but what it does is it really helps you fine tune. So if you're pulling out of a parking space, if you're backing into your garage and you have a really tight space, it just kind of helps you go that extra couple of inches. So it's not a replacement for driving by your mirrors, but it's just a tool to use to help you fine tune. And I really like that. And it helps you see around all of your corners. So it's not just the back, it's not just the front, it's that front right tire and that front right fender that you wanna protect. I like that. Now the last thing that I like about this test vehicle, and I was have to say this is probably my second favorite thing, but I put it last on the list because, hey, by the way, save the best for last, but that's gonna be the redundant controls. So the fact that this has both a touch screen and a rotary dial, I really like that. So you're gonna please a greater number of people I don't know why more vehicles don't do both because then you don't have anything to complain about. You're making everybody happy. And by the way, I never thought I'd say that about a BMW infotainment system. All right, so we're moving on to the things that I don't like about this vehicle. So the first thing for me as a petite driver is going to have to be the seat bottoms. They're just a little bit too long. And the fact that this has a power adjustable seat bottom, that tells me that they could have made it one or two inches just a little bit shorter and everybody would win even more because then you adjust for your fifth percentile female, which is me, and you allow it to go out a little bit longer for the taller drivers. So the fact that they have the power adjustable system and they didn't accommodate the smallest drivers, I find that a little bit weird and definitely a little bit irksome. So that is number one on my do not like list. Now, the, another thing that I don't like about this test vehicle is the fact that everything is an option. If you want heated seats, if you want ventilated seats, if you want the drive assist features, if you want wireless charging, it's an option. So this is a $60,000 vehicle that doesn't even come with leather seats. <laughs> it's an option. I find that a little bit annoying and definitely makes number two on my do not like list. Number three is going to be gesture control. I had some serious issues with this feature. I could never get it to work when I wanted it to work and it always worked when I didn't want it to work. I would reach for my cup of coffee and I would mute the audio system. I would be talking to my husband and talk with my hands and I would change the radio station. So it didn't work the way I wanted it to. However, my husband sitting in the passenger seat managed to get it to work pretty much 100% of the time. I probably got it to work about 30% of the time. So here, I'm just shutting that off. It's a good idea, but just doesn't work very well. So speaking of things that don't work very well, this is going to be number four on my list, and that's the kick activated trunk. On the first day that I got this vehicle, and frankly, every day since, except for today, I tried to use the kick activated trunk even when I was at the grocery store and had my arms full, tried to use it and it didn't work. Of course, today I'm filming video and everything is coming up roses and it's working just fine. But um, previously trying to get that to work, I'd kick 
everywhere along the tailgate and it just, I couldn't get it to open. The final thing that I don't like about the BMW 540i xDrive is kind of a personal thing. And that is the fact that there is no longer a manual transmission available in this vehicle. In any 5 Series, there is no manual transmission available. And that just hurts my soul a little bit. This is a sporty car. It's meant to be driven kind of like a sports car. And yet there is no manual transmission. And, and it just, I get it. The only 1% of the population knows how to drive one. So they're doing away with it because more people are buying an automatic. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I understand 100%, but it just doesn't seem right for a vehicle like this. Even in the M5 version, there is no manual transmission. In fact, the only BMWs that currently offer a manual transmission are the M2, the M3, and the M4. Three vehicles. So, the final thing that I don't like about this vehicle, and I guess most BMWs, is the fact that there is no longer a manual transmission. I need a small moment of silence. All right. So now it's time to wrap up the review. I want to thank you for visiting my channel, Car Du Jour, and for checking out this video. Uh, if you want to follow me on social, you can always type in the hashtag Car Du Jour. That should bring up the things that I am posting about, but you can also follow me at Jill Simonello on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. Overall, I love how this vehicle drives. I don't like the price and I really hate the fact that everything is an option. But if you don't really care about the price tag or the options and you want a car that drives really well, I think 100% this is it. Unless you want a manual transmission, then you're SOL. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. This is just really annoying. Where are all these people coming from? I have no idea. And this person doesn't know how to drive and merge, so the system is shutting off. Come on. Ugh. So the number two thing that I like on the BMW 540i is going to have to be the park assist. I really, it just creeps me out when people walk towards the car. Even though they're not going to come in, you know, literally this close. Okay. That's a black squirrel. These systems is when they are a completely hands-free system and people aren't paying attention. Oh. Got it. I've never used this system before. I'm still trying to figure it out. The vehicle is steering. The vehicle is shifting gears. And it stopped. <laughs>